Hello and welcome to my second video. Today I am going to be doing a uh, hive tyrant that I picked up. This is a WizKids model. I just really like the way he looked and I thought for fun since this is just bone it should be a fairly quick job and then I'll also be doing the inking over the ice, uh, magical eye stalks coming from it but that I would show you guys quickly how I do my bone. Uh, this is not the only way to do bone. There are multiple methods. This is just one I like to utilize for a lot of depth and color and highlights. So, this is the miniature we'll be painting today. And the colors we're going to be using today are Rhinox Hide by Citadel Paint. It's a nice, solid, uh, dark, rich brown color. Uh, my next highlight level that I'll be going up is uh, this Marin Mate Flat Brown by Model Color. This one I picked up at Hobby Lobby pretty inexpensive. I really like the reddish hue to this. It gives a little bit more color to the miniature. After that, we'll be going through, I'm not sure yet, I'll either be going with the Steel Legion uh, Drab by Citadel, or I'll be going with the Gun Corpse Brown by P3 Formula, uh, or Formula P3. Um, I haven't decided yet, so I have them both out here. They're fairly close, just slightly different shades. Uh, after that, we'll be going with the Citadel Karak Stone, and then my final highlight layer will be, and this will be only on the absolute like on the teeth and on a couple of the ridges like around the eye stalk and on the cheekbones and on the spines coming out of it, we'll be doing the Usha Bite Bone. And hopefully it'll come together pretty well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, it's been a while since I've been painting. I was on vacation for a bit, which is always nice to be able to take a chance to go home and visit family and friends. Okay. So I'm going to get just some of this. Now I'm not going to absolutely cover the miniature in this. Uh, I did pre-prep it. I did wash this with uh, a green stuff mix, or not green stuff, um, simple green mix with some warm water. Uh, so that way it'll help the paint stick to it. But I'm going to start by getting all the dark crevices, or what I want to be the darker crevices, inside the skull of the miniature because that'll be our most shaded area. So we're gonna want that to be nice and dark. We'll do very minimal highlighting within the inside here. Anyway. I've painted so many skeleton boys. I painted pretty much an entire undeath Age of Sigmar army. Lots of skeletons vampires. Uh, if you go to Mars Minions, you'll see some of the more recent ones I've painted with the new releases that have been done. The Crypt Guards and Bone Collector. Bone Collector was actually really fun because I had to do two different tones for the uh, bones. I didn't just do what I'm going to be doing on here on this miniature today. I also did a grayish bone for the little guys or what was remaining of the guys inside the uh, back. And that is on my Facebook at Mars Minions. Um, <laughs> all right. Hopefully it's getting in there okay. So yeah. But the, yeah, so the reason I'm gonna be doing this darker color in here is like I said, there's gonna be the uh, least highlighted area. There's not gonna be very much. I'm also gonna do dark around the eye. Uh, you just gotta be really careful going around the eye here because I don't wanna get any of the brown on the eye itself. I wanna leave it nice and translucent. If I was a little more confident, I would uh, drill a small hole and try to do a little wiring job to get one little light in there because I think that would look really, really cool. In fact, if any of you guys have any videos or tutorials on how to do simple lighting effects for miniatures, I would love to see that because I want to try getting into doing a little bit more daring stuff with my, my projects. But yeah, so really want to get the dark colors. It will give a lot of depth. There we go. I'm horrible with that. I'll get an official paint set up one of these days. But for now, You know, I'm going to move my paint over here. Oh, well, I'm not reaching across the screen every time I get more paint. But 
<laughs> I'll also be having some specters for the Age of Sigmar Undead Army. I'll be painting soon. Let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing that. I do kind of an unusual paint scheme for it because it is part of a uh, commission set that I've done a lot of other paint jobs for, uh, as mentioned. So it, it they are a black, very dark purple, and red highlight that I really like the combination. I think it comes out looking pretty cool, and it is what has been requested. So as long as it's what that's what the uh, person wants. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to continue touching up all the under areas, kind of getting into some of these cracks. But I'm not going to do all of it. I'm just going to do the more shadow shaded parts. It's really dry here. Keep that brush wet. For now anyway. I'm going to get into some of the dry brushing for the highlights. We'll be able to use a little bit of a drier brush. I'm probably also going to do dark inside the um, uh, temple area right here. I was going to say zygomatic, but that would be around the eye. So, so if you guys are working on any projects right now, I would love to uh, hear about them. Or you can even post them. Um, like I said, in Mars Minions, I'd be more than happy to see what you guys are working on. And you guys can see some of the other stuff I've done, like I said. I love seeing how different people paint the same miniatures. It's just crazy the amount of creativity you can get. It's a, you have ten different people sit down with the same thing in front of them and you get just 10 completely different end products that come out of it. I think it's really cool. It's one of the things I love about tabletop painting and things like that is that there's no real right way to do it. It's just what you need for your, your table or your situation or your BBG or your hero that you're going to be playing on the next D&D &D game. It's kind of fun. I'm still finding ways to improve my paint jobs. Like I said, this is by no means the perfect or most or simplest way to do things. I mean, airbrush would be the way to go, but I do not have an airbrush yet, so I have to paint all my miniatures by hand. I just recently got my setup for full-time painting and working on hobby stuff. So. But I kind of like it. I like getting in there and getting every little crevice. It makes me feel like I know every little bit of the miniature. again just getting in here getting the darker shade I want, and this is the uh, Rhinox so, yeah Rhinox hide and I use this for the base instead of a uh, I, I, get, I don't want to say paler because it's not paler but a grayer um, brown because I like that red tone in there I like a little bit of that change with the color it just makes it feel a little bit richer in the final product. Oops. Oops. Let's get that off there. There we go. Easy fix. Easy fix. All right. Still getting used to painting with the, the camera up here. <laughs> now, I've never fought one of these in a game yet. I don't know if it's just because... Well, I haven't thought of Beholder either. I don't know if it's just because they've become so cliche, the games I've played in, that people just 
the DM just doesn't throw it in or or what I guess I'm lucky have gone against several ropers though and that is not fun I do not like ropers I have a TPK with ropers and that's when the DM discovered they misread some of the stats so we did sort of a <laughs> rewind undo you had a dream situation where we learned that we needed to protect each other's backs so we can continue the game because we didn't want it to end there. We were only like level five or six. So it's great stuff. Didn't make it any better. We were escaping a prison. The DM started us off in a prison and we found a secret way out of the prison going through an ancient dungeon. And uh, during that escape, we had pretty much no weapons except for the rusted things we were finding and occasional magic treasure because it was a dungeon. So. It was fun times though. I don't mind playing on hard mode and every now and then. We started the dun when we started off in jail, we were like level three. And so before we made out of the dungeon, we made it to like level seven. <laughs> with almost no weapons or equipment or gear. It was great stuff. So I'm just going to get in here and get some of these crevices and then we'll be moving on to the next color. And I do know I need a better setup. I don't know if you guys, hopefully you guys can see okay. I'm trying to keep it more centered this time. But if you have any other advice or things I can do to help you guys see what I'm doing or things you would like to see in the future, I would love to love to make some more videos. So if there's certain miniature ty types or painting stuff you want to see done, cloth, clothing, wood, um, textures, just how I do my different things, just let me know. It's always nice to see, like I said, it's always nice to see how other people do things. Like, I'm not trying to get full coverage right now, I'm just getting in those gaps. So it's going to look a little rough, but it will all come together in the end. At this point, it's okay to make some little mistakes because I'm going to be covering it over. No, there's different methods to this, and I like to go from the darks to the lights. He's already coming along quite well. Pretty pleased with it. So just a little bit more back here. Seeing a couple little spots I missed that I want some that color in. Alright. <laughs> it looks like a mess right now. Okay. And with each level up we're going to go after I get the flat brown down, we'll be being more careful as we go. I'm just going to come along these little jaw spines here. Just getting some little shading in there. So have any of you guys fought a Hive Tyrant in any of your games? If so, I would love to hear your stories. I do sometimes wish these models came disattached from their stands so I could really get in there and get the color all the way through. But this works. Just gotta be careful. Just 
just gonna get some of the ridges in here and behind the teeth and we'll move on to our next color I know I've already said that <laughs> then I keep spotting things I think it'll look look nice when it's done. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think I'm ready to move on. All right. Give my paintbrush a full rinse out here. Okay. All right, now we're going to be moving on to the, uh, oops, model color, uh, flat brown. So now we're going to get the rest of the white areas that I've left on him, and we're also going to start highlighting over some of the areas that I've already been. And he's going to look really reddish brown now, but once I start going over, you'll see how that works into it. I painted a zombie beholder a while back. That was fun. I did like a pale greenish, greenish white skin to it. And I did an undead eyeball that was pale with a slightly bluish silver iris and its main eye. It's pretty, pretty fun to do. So I'm going to kind of go over all the teeth right now. I don't want to get into the cracks that I've, or the crevices on the gum line. I want to kind of leave that the darker brown. So I'm just trying to hit the teeth. Which I'm doing by going over the top portion and then just dragging some of the color down. And if you also come at an angle, you'll get the sides. And then I'll do the same along the back. Yeah, he's already starting to pop and come together. I'm really excited. Whenever I go on trips, I pick this guy up while I was on vacation. Whenever I go on trips, I always try to stop by local game shops, pick up at least one or two miniatures because I like supporting the different local businesses. I just couldn't pass this guy up. But I really like the monster miniatures, so. Oh yeah, I really love how those teeth are already starting to, starting to pop there. And since this isn't going to be, we still have a good three colors we're going to be highlighting with. It's okay if I have to go over and clean up any of the spots I missed with the rhinox there. Now it's important when you're going over it though not to cover up all of it because that 
offers you that shading just sort of a little bit of higher points oh yeah that's <laughs> this is gonna look great it's already coming together pretty good Just be careful not to get the stocks. I know in the normal WizKids beholder miniature, you can wait to put the stocks on, but these came attached and I didn't want to mess with them too much. A couple of them seem rather fragile. So we'll just have to work around them. getting carried away. I know I need to go finish that white, but it's looking great. Okay, let's focus on the white. Get that all covered up. Make them look more unified. And because it is a tyrant, who's to say what color their skeleton is? The holders might look pretty funky have a lot of fun with different colors. Oops. Sorry about that. Got a little over exuberant with my brush. Caught the cord. Now one thing you can always do if you don't have enough shading when you're done, especially for a bone miniature like this, is go over with a uh, uh, wash just to fill in those little crevices. I'm probably not going to do that with this one. I'd say probably not, but we'll see when I get to the final product. Yeah, that's looking great. Like I said, I really love these two browns together. I know they're not from the same company, but it's just amazing that how well they, they pair for that contrast. It looks really good. And I'm highlighting again. Back to the white. Back to the white. I get so distracted. I start seeing other things and working on it. It's supposed to be a speed paint. So let's concentrate on the speeding. Or at least the focusing on what I need to get done. Yeah. Oh, this is the zygomatic, right? The bone here? So that be the zygo? Cheekbone? said the right thing earlier, I think. My cats are actually being nice and quiet today and not bothering me. And I keep hitting my cord. <laughs> Just gonna get in here and get all this. So I'm probably gonna do a dry brush esque thing. Along the back here. And then really focus on highlighting those points coming off the back.
and how this done it. Yeah, that's, I'm really happy with the color. <laughs> it could just be that I'm happy to be back at painting. I got in the habit of trying to paint one miniature a day, or as close to as I could. A couple days I was painting a couple miniatures. Because I had a bet going with my, my SO. And uh, I, I did not win the bet. I was not able to paint all my miniatures in uh, six months. Uh, it turns out that was a fool's errand, but I did put quite a dent and it really fueled my creativity and got me going, which is one of the reasons I actually started trying to do this painting uh, videos, because I was hoping maybe I can inspire some other people to pick up the brush and just get painting, because it's fun. That's why it's fun. The first time I started painting miniatures, I was in college, and my brother, he was he was living with me, because he was first year, and I was going into third year, so he didn't have to live in dorms if he had a family member to stay with. Split rent, lived in an apartment, it was really nice, but he got into Warhammer. I never heard, really heard of it before, I'd heard of Lord of the Rings Warhammer, and that was about it. I thought it was just like the Lord of the Rings game. <laughs> but he started getting into uh, 40k got me to get a few miniatures and I started painting with him and I just I absolutely fell in love with the painting. So. <clears throat> I've only played a few games of Warhammer and I got my butt kicked every time. <laughs> I tried running Chaos uh, Corn, and then I decided to go into uh, Slanesh I think I did one battle with a small group of uh, those guys. Oh gosh, it's been so long, I don't even remember which forces I used exactly. But I just I just kept getting my butt kicked. I think it's a fun fun concept. I love to watch people play. And I love painting their miniatures. <laughs> so I will, I will be happy with that. And then I got introduced to D&D and Pathfinder later. But what do you guys use your miniatures for? You guys use it for Warhammer or what other games do you guys play with using them? So many of them have great, you can use them for multiple things. It's one of the reasons I love the Age of Sigmar. I've used a lot of them for BBGs in my Pathfinder games I ran. Yeah, I know I have a big spot on the top of his head I gotta get to, but just keep seeing some tiny little areas. That contrast though, it's just so pretty. So nice. So I've just been very similar for my wood, when I paint wood. <clears throat> Excuse me. The only difference is I go with a slightly grayer, more dried out tone, unless I'm painting uh, red wood or something like that. And I use a lot of washes, so that way I can get the grain, the wood grain uh, with my tiny brush. When I say tiny brush, I mean my, what, what is it, uh, four zero, so. And then I'll do a wash or a contrast paint over the top for a stained wood look. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through and do some of the highlighting on the areas with the Rhinox. Get any little gaps I missed. Ah, perfect amount of paint. I love it when I use, when I'm using a dropper, I get the perfect amount of paint to cover what I need to cover. Because I hate wasting paint. So I'm just going to get the highlights on the cheeks. Some of this in here, right around the temple. And 
I'm gonna get the edges. See any of the teeth I missed. See the highlights here. Once again, don't go over everything. You're gonna wanna leave some of that dark color there. Just kind of do a slightly Just a little area here. Yeah, the, now's the time you want to fill in anything that you see that is white or whatever your undercolor is. Uh, on some, some of these miniatures, I do spray paint a base brown down, but like I said for this one, I thought we'd just go in. I'm also going to get the roof of the mouth real quick. Just going to get right there. I'm just going to very lightly come up and catch the ridges because he has a uh, I don't know if you can see, but inside the mouth he has these really nice roof ridges. So I'm really going to get in there, highlight those a bit. And we'll, we'll do a little bit more with the next color we're going to, <clears throat> but not too much more because that is going to be one of the darker parts of the miniature. Some of the highlights here. Oop, that was almost made a mistake. I'm also going to want to get right here under the eye. That's where light will hit, straight down like that. Now, on the upper part of the eyelid, you're not going to want to really get too much more color in there. But like right here, right above where the nasal cavity would be on a normal creature, <laughs> because of how the light comes down, you're going to make sure you get that. And then a little bit there and there. Okay. A um, couple more little spots, and we'll move on to our next color. Yeah, WizKids does have some pretty cool models. They're getting better ones all the time. Uh, my favorite though, my favorite company line to buy from when I can is Reaper. I am not sponsored by them or anything, but I do love their miniatures. They have some pretty cool stuff, especially with their uh, Elder Horror lines. They have Shogoth and Yggdrasil and a whole bunch of really cool ones. Cthulhu, of course, but... And they just did a Kickstarter for their Bones 5, I think. And they're going to be starting 6 up soon, I think in the end of September. So it's always fun to see what they have coming up. I also like their miniatures because they're not, they're usually you have to assemble the bigger miniatures yourself, the bigger models, which gives you a chance to do pre painting before it is all put together, which is one thing that annoys me about WizKids. I like to have a chance to get some base painting in, especially if it's a hard to reach crevice or area. All right, I think, get a little bit in here, and I think we're gonna move on to our next color. Yeah, just a little bit in the draw. Okay, yeah. I'm pretty happy with how he's coming along. And that's just two colors, and look at that already. I mean, if you were trying to do something really quick, you could probably just do a highlight with a third and leave them darker, but I'm going to light them up quite a bit. Although I really do like that dark color. Okay, so now that I'm seeing how he looks, I'm going to have to make that decision. I think between the uh, Steel, Steel Legion Drab and the Formula P3 Guncore Brown, I'm going to go with the... Guncore Brown, because that's a little bit more of a um, yellowish red tone to it, which I think will really go well with the, how the miniature is turning out. And just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about, make sure this is mixed. So this one has like a slightly more greenish yellow tone to it, um, at least from my from what I can see and how I'm viewing this. Uh, some people might disagree. I know I need to shake it up a little bit more. This is one of my older paints I probably need to replace. But uh, it has a little bit more of a yeah, greenish yellow tone to it. Whereas this one, 
I'm gonna show this in my newer one. It has just a slightly more uh, orange red tone to it. It's it's really hard to see. Um, let's see if you can. I don't know if you can tell on that. It's just very very subtle. A very subtle color difference. So we're gonna go with this one. All right. I'm also gonna be changing my brush after this. After this, I'll change my brush to a smaller one. All right, so this time, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna be going for even more careful highlighting. So I'm gonna put this aside. All right, so we're gonna start with the teeth. And we want not to get all the way up to the gum. We're just wanting to get the lower portion of the teeth coming down. Or where the gum would be, I guess. Yeah, we're just gonna, no, we don't, there we go. Just want to get that upper portion coming down. We want to leave a gap, which will add a really nice contrast to the main skeleton. All right. I might go one shade lighter with the teeth than I do with the rest of the body, just to get a nice, sharp, needle-like look. Okay, I'm gonna go into the inside of the teeth. I'm gonna do the back sides real quick, just so I get that all done in one go. Now that we're focusing on the more detailed Okay, make sure I didn't miss any little areas. There we go. So now we got those teeth nice and nice and sharp, nice little sharp chompers. I was reading the stats for the 3.5 stats for a hive tyrant, and it was saying that its main thing is the chomping because it doesn't have much of the brain left, being a skeleton and all still has the magical eye beams, but its intelligence is not operational, so to speak. All right, so I'm gonna highlight around the eye, and then we're gonna start highlighting some of the other areas. Probably do just a simple rock base, maybe do an obsidian with some purple highlight. We'll see when we get to that. All right. So I'm just carefully going along the upper raised ridges of the bone here. in the gum line ridges. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> it's really not. It's looking really good.
Okay. I'm trying to get this video to be under an hour. We'll see. We'll see how I do. <laughs> I have to break my videos up into bits. Smaller bits. Or start editing them down. Do you guys like seeing the whole process? Or uh, should I edit it down so skip certain of my shading bits? So I'm just going to focus on coming up from the eye since that's the major focal point. I'm just going to sort of bring the color up. I'll kind of lightly skip over areas where there's slight indentations in the head. Just to give it a highlighted feel. Just a real gentle up brush. So that way you can control how much pressure and have your lips in there. So there's some little crevices like um, epithelial plates, which you can see where the little lines are. And I'm just sort of lifting up and skipping over them just slightly. So that way I can leave a, the um, flat brown visible there without covering it up fully. And what that'll do is it'll just make a nice, nice contrast and it'll give a really 3D texture to look when it's all dry and done. I'm going very, very light touch here. It's just a little bit of color that I'll drag a little bit and then have it sort of fade off into whatever the main color is because I'm not wanting to overshadow the other or uh, paint over all the other layers I've done because this is going to be more shaded inside the jaw and inside those crevices. And really, if you just follow the bone lines and highlight it using those guiding guiding lines, the miniature already provides you. Really, it's a lot simpler than it sounds. So I think I am going to probably leave this one a little darker. Because I'm, I'm just really liking the color. It's, it's just one of those things that as you get painting, you start seeing how it's coming along. You kind of get a feel for maybe how it should look or what the attitude of the model is. Get the jaw here. And like I said, I'm just coming up very light, almost whisking, whisking it upwards. Just catching a little bit of paint on the brush and pulling up. And then for the last color we'll do, I will use a smaller brush just so I can really control where I'm putting my highlight. And what we'll do is we'll only be doing the absolute edges and the areas we want to really be the most most bleached because that, that's what's happening with the skeleton is that it's becoming bleached and exposed to the elements without the uh, the skin covering it the epidermis there we go that's what i was looking for 
And then I'm just going to come in here and get right where the mouth is open and the light will shine on it. And then I'm only going to do a very tiny bit inside the roof of the mouth where those ridges are just ever so lightly. And this will probably be the last highlight I'm going to do in the mouth. The back of the head. Okay. Very lightly here, bring some color out. Perfect. And then we're just going to be doing a very almost dry brush, but not quite, just wet enough to hold the paint on there. Very limited amount of color. And we're just going to trying to get a good angle on this. I might have to take it off the grip so I can get a better angle on this to show you guys what I'm, what I'm going to be doing here in the back. I'm just doing this on the, the brighter color on the spikes because I'm going to do them of uh, the uh, jaw, um, yeah, spines, spikes. So I'll be doing those fairly brightly because they've always been exposed. They would have been outside of the skin when it was fully formed, so they would be a lighter color than the rest of its skeleton. I'm going to do a light brushing on the inside of the jaw here too, just to. There we go. Very almost, this one's pretty much a dry brush at this point. <laughs> but I'm coming in here just to put a little bit of color, erase riches. All right, now we're gonna do the back of the, back of the tyrant. All right, come up. Once again, I'm using the eyeball as my main focus and pulling from there. So that way any streaking and lines I'm making Come from a center point. It's amazing what, what things the eye can pick up on just subconsciously. So especially if you're looking at it straight on, I want it to kind of be drawn backwards. And we're gonna want these raised spikes to be, once again, lighter than everything else. So cover those entirely. And then when we do highlighting on them, I will come up with lines, um, just just um, bringing out the ridges a little bit. I almost forgot this whole <laughs> side here. Ugh. I'm just getting excited seeing all the little bits to do and going in.
I'm just pulling the color back onto the head. So we can be a happy little tyrant. Happy little brainless homicidal tyrant. Well. Hmm. Okay. Just continue to pull the color back. Almost done. Now I'm not trying to go too thick with this coat. Like I said, I'm just trying to go very light, which helps with the blending. Especially when you go light, some of the color is translucent, which allows that reddish orange tone to slime, shine through, slime through, shine through. I'm not wanting to cover up everything I did. I'm just but making it a little lighter. bits back here. Just make it a little bit more. There we go. Making sure I haven't forgotten any area I want to do. A little bit more highlight here. Brighten that up a bit. I want the cheeks to be really, really nice and light. So I'm gonna just hit those one more time. There we go. Spines, got all of them. Okay more here. Put more here. And a little bit more here. And then when I'm done with him, I'm probably going to do a matte finish instead of a gloss finish. Normally I do like a gloss finish for my skeletons because it just makes the bones pop. Really nice. But this time I'm going to think I'm going to do a matte finish because I really like this really dirty kind of grimy look he has going. All right. So now we're going to move on to our second to last color uh, for the main body, which is going to be the Karak Stone. Now this you're going to want to use very sparingly. We're going to do a sort of wet blend, and by that I mean we're going to use very thin amounts and kind of drag the color, um, which I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to go down. This is going to be my uh, three brush, and I use the uh, Artisan Shop, the Artisan Shop. Very nice brushes. Once again, not sponsored, but just really enjoy their products. <laughs> and they have been the longest lasting brushes I have ever used at a very reasonable price. You can get a pack of uh, four this size on uh, Amazon for like less than less than 12 bucks. Um, and I don't know how many brushes you guys have been through, but 
uh, that fine point I've had on there for a while. <laughs> At least half a year, if not longer. Uh, let me make sure I mix this. I can't remember. It's always good to get an extra shake, too. All right. So now what we're going to do with this one is we're going to be extra careful, I'm going to put this to the side again, extra careful about where we're hitting. And I'm just going to do a very little bit of paint on here. And I'm only going to be hitting the part of the tooth that faces outward this time. And we're not doing the whole tooth. We're not doing the whole tooth, the tooth and nothing but the tooth. We're just going to be doing the very tips here. Just the tip. And, uh, just coming down, light. And it looks really bright now, but when this begins to dry, it dries a little bit darker. A lot of paints do that, so it's always nice to practice with your paints before you decide what you're going to use, especially if you haven't worked with a color before. Do a couple swaths on it with a couple different backgrounds. I know a lot of people say do that type of stuff, but really try it. it it's eye-opening how some of your paints interact. Because depending on what type of color look you're wanting to go for, whether you do a black background, a white background, a pink background, it will change the colors and how they turn out. It's a really real thing. Um, which I have practiced with firsthand and seen the results. One of the craziest things I've learned as of late, it was finally pointed out here I've been painting for, I don't want to say, say it, but like over 10 years. And I just recently found out within the last year that if you want a really beautiful bright yellow job on a miniature, to undercoat it with a pink and I tried it and it does work and it works very nicely. I have a little murder ducky toy from Reaper from one of, from their evil toy set that I painted that just came out beautiful. I also have the Keen and Yellow or I think they call them the Crimson Herald or something from Reaper Miniatures that I did as well and it just looks gorgeous. Just because I did a little bit of a little bit of a pink undertone for the rope. All right, now I'm gonna highlight the eye. This time we're not doing the entire thing. We're just gonna be doing a little bit of highlighting. And as you can already see, it's starting to really pop. So I'm just gonna do this part of the ridge and I'm not gonna connect it together. I'm gonna leave a gap there. And that is because your eye, the human eye, not just your eye, the eye in general, likes to connect things and will be interactive in connecting things together and making it a cohesive whole. Which is pretty cool. It's nice when you can trick the brain with just a little bit of color. So I'm gonna highlight some of these ridges here. And once again, I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'm just gonna do some of them coming up. That is my cat. She has to sneeze us. And I'm probably not going to finish the eye and everything because this video is already running long. But I will put the finished product with the obsidian base and the eyes painted on Mars Minions on Facebook. So if you guys want to see what it looks like when it's all put together, please feel free to come by there and check. I'll try to put the description for, or the link, not the description, the link in the description below so you guys can go over there and take, take a look. I hope that this has given you guys some ideas or some, some just a different, different way of doing things, whether you guys utilize it or not. I hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know if you want to see more in the future. I just enjoy doing these, and no problem with doing more. I don't like how bright that is, so I'm gonna, that's a little too bright. Okay, tone down just a bit. Got a little too carried away. All right, finish this down here, I'm gonna move up.
like I said, most of this sharp edge here on the jaw is going to be lighter because it would have been exposed longer. So I'm just bringing those together here. I'm not sure if I want to go with a red eye or a purple eye. I'm thinking maybe a purple. Just to give it a nice difference. Ooh, I could do, I might do a turquoise blue one. Like a bluish green. I'll probably try it on the stock, see how it looks, and <laughs> wipe it off if I don't like it. But if you guys do want to see how I do uh, paint the clear, let me know, and I will put up another video. I have a lot of miniatures that I have coming up that I need to paint that have a lot of clear bits on them, so I can show you how I do that, if you're interested. I personally like using inks. I have a couple basically calligraphy like inks that I utilize. A uh, very bright red one, which is my favorite. This is such a rich ruby red. But I don't want to do everything red, so. I also have some contrast paints from Citadel. And a couple of the clear ones from Reaper. So just let me know if you guys want to see some of those in the future. And I will show you how I do that. So this video is running a little over an hour, so I'm going to finish up highlighting. I'm going to uh, highlight this with a, a little bit more of the Karak Stone, and then when I'm done, I will be posting the final product on Mars Minions on Facebook. You're welcome to come, look, take a look, and uh, even join. Post some of your own miniatures. Let me see what you're working on. Um, if interested, I do take commissions. Haven't done in a while because I just finished moving and getting set up here but I am more than willing to talk if there's something you guys are interested in. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, bye.